This is Geometry Chapter 2, Section 7, in which we will prove segment relationships. We're going to continue our journey into the proof idea, and we're going to do it by proving things about segments. We'll start with a couple of postulates, the first of which is called the ruler postulate. Your book numbers it as 2.8. And it's the ruler postulate. And the idea is if one end of a segment is set up so that it's at zero on a number line, then the other end will end up at some other number. That number is equal to the length of the segment. It's like when you get a ruler out, you put zero at one end of, the, of whatever line you're measuring. And then wherever the other end of the line is, that's, oh, that's the length. That's 6 and 7 eighths or whatever. Okay. So the ruler postulate you've been using almost your whole life. You just didn't know it was called that. Another postulate you've been using for a while. You just didn't know that you were using a postulate yet. is called the segment addition postulate. And it's what we've been using when we talked about points being between. If A, B, and C are collinear, then B will be between A and C if and only if A, B plus B, C equals A, C. What this is saying is the two smaller pieces add together to make the whole big piece. You've been doing these for a while now. We started on those in chapter one, and here we are at the end of chapter two almost. And they're finally getting around to telling you that this is indeed a postulate. Now our job here is going to be to prove something. If we know that CE is congruent to FE, and we know ED is congruent to EG, then our job is to prove that FG, this whole segment, is equal to, is congruent to CD, this whole segment. Okay. Well, we know where we're starting with the hypothesis. CE is congruent to FE, and ED is congruent to FG, uh, excuse me, to EG. And our reason for that is that was given to us. That's the hypothesis. So it's given. Now we know where we're trying to get to is CD is equal or is congruent to FG. Well, if we want to talk about segment CD, we can say that CD is equal to CE plus ED. Right? The two smaller parts added together make the whole big one. And while we're at it, we can also say FE and add EG. What have we done? We've added the two things together. Now, CE plus ED is equal to CD. FE plus EG is equal to FG. That's the segment addition postulate. Notice I didn't write the whole word for any of that out. Okay, as long as the abbreviation is obvious what you mean, you can abbreviate words. We could have even just written add here for addition. But segment addition postulate, if you wanted to, you could put the number postulate 2.8. Either way works for me. I don't care which one you call it. Now, since we've said the two lengths are equal, what does that mean? If two lengths are equal, that means the segments are congruent. And we know that's true because of the definition of congruent. Again, notice the shorthand, definition. 
and not writing the word congruent but using the symbol for it. Okay. What did we do? Let's go through it again to make sure you've got it. We had two different things that were equal, so we added those together. CE plus ED, FE plus EG. Then we looked and said CE plus ED is the same as just CD to begin with. FE plus EG is the same as FG. So we use the segment addition postulate. And then we got into a nitpicky area. We have that the two things are equal, and we're supposed to prove they're congruent. So we have to actually say they're congruent by the definition of congruent. That's more of a nitpicky thing that mathematicians get really fussy about is you've said they're equal, but you haven't said they're congruent yet. So just be careful there to make sure you get to the conclusion that you're trying to get to. Okay. Let's try another one out. Suppose we are given that JL is congruent to KM. And we want to prove that that means from J to K is congruent to L to M. Well, we know where to start. We know we can start with the given for sure. What do we know about segment JL? Well, segment JL is going to be equal to JK plus KL. And similarly, segment KM is going to be equal to KL plus LM. How do we know that's true? That's the segment addition postulate again. Now notice what we have here. We have something that JL is equal to, and we have something that KM is equal to. So I can plug those things in. I can take JL out of here and insert JK plus KL. I can take KM out of here and insert KL plus LM. And that's called the substitution property, or you could say it's the transitive property. You wouldn't technically be wrong. Most people would think of it as substitution, but transitive works as well. Okay. Well, I'm getting close to what I want, because I want to talk about JK and LM, and I've got a JK, I've got an LM. What I don't need is this pesky KL in the way. But if I subtract KL from both sides, it's going to cancel out. So I'm going to subtract, and that'll be my reason, is subtraction. Subtract segment KL out of it. Now I'm down to JK is equal to LM. And then we have the nitpicky finish. We said they're equal. We need to say that means they're congruent by the definition of congruent. Okay. Now, previously we talked about the reflexive property, the symmetric and the transitive properties when we talked about numbers. The same idea holds true for segments. So theorem 2.2, properties of segment congruence, tells us that if we have segments congruent, we can use the reflexive property with those, we can use the symmetric property with those, we can use the transitive property with those. And what they're telling us is if we need to, we can say segment AB is congruent to segment AB. Or we can trade sides of the equation. Or we can use the transitive property. Not really a very powerful theorem, to say the least. 
but it's a theorem that we need to know about. Typically, we won't refer to it as that theorem. We'll refer to the reflexive property if we need to use that. So we've gone through a little bit with proving things about segments. And you're going to get some practice with that in your assignment here. As always, if you had questions, I hope you brought those along, wrote those down. And we will see you in class.